the first thing I want to discuss with you is cell. We have heard this term from our smaller classes, be it your plants or animals or any organisms which are there, you call cell as the basic functional unit of it. Okay. Now, the reason why a cell is called as a basic functional unit of something is because all the functions that we see now for example if you take a human body we respire we excrete we reproduce we we digest all of these processes that we are able to do as a large whole it is if you look like okay where it is all starting from it's because each cell in us is able to do that got it so all the functions we see on a larger scale is primarily seen in the smaller unit called as cell this is the reason why we call cell as the basic functional unit of something it can be anything it can be animal plant etc now let's have because this is something that upsc has asked previously also so where exactly or uh, when you look at animal cell and plant cells so this one over here is an animal cell And this over here is a plant cell. Okay. One of the first things that we notice over here is what are the differences? They, they are not same at all. So what are the primary differences between both? As you can see, a plant cell seems much more rigid, much more um, firm in its structuring. Why? Because it has something called as a cell wall. You can see over here, this uh, thick material over here, it's a cell wall. As compared to the animal cell, that cell wall is not present. Here you will see that maybe the most outer, uh, the, what do you say, this full layer is just covered by something called as your plasma membrane and inside your plasma membrane is where all the things are contained in. Okay, so that is the very first difference. Then let's look again in the case of the plant cell, you have a very large area like this. You don't see it, uh, anything of that sort in the animal cell. So what is this? So a plant cell has something called as a vacuole. So this thing over here, which is very large in size is a vacuole. Okay, uh, in animal cell, you do have vacuoles, but they are not this large. Okay, you will see vacuoles which are smaller in size, not such large things. Again, the reason uh, in, in when it comes to your plant cell, you need that um, big vacuoles because in a lot of plants, you know, be it the oils, any kind of, um, you know, resins or anything that's created gets stored in these vacuoles. That's the reason why plants have a much larger vacuole. Animals do have vacuoles, but it is much, much smaller in size and uh, it's not just one big vacuole. So, what happens is you have smaller sized three, four different vacuoles which are there. Okay. Then coming into some of the other major differences. So, let's have a table that to uh, understand over here. So, I told you about the cell wall. I told you about the vacuole size. Then comes an important feature called as the plastids. Okay. Animal cell generally do not have so much of plastids. In fact, they plastids are absolutely absent in animal cell. What are plastids? You would have heard something called as chloroplast. What is chloroplast? Chloroplast is that organelle. Any anything that is inside the cell, you call it as organelle. Okay. So chloroplast is an organelle that is capable of giving the green pigment to your plants. Okay, so uh, now in case you do not have a chloroplast, some plants have chromoplast, which is a much more, it's not green, it's much more other different colors. Leucoplast, which is able to store certain fats, etc., oils, etc. So all of these plastids are generally seen in your plant cell, not in your animal cell. So plastids, plant cell has it, animal cell doesn't have it. Moving forward, centrosomes. I would say centrosomes is one such thing which the animal cell has and the plant cell doesn't have. So your animal cell has it, your plant cell doesn't have it. Centrosomes are primarily an organelle that helps in cell division. Got it? 
it helps in cell division then finally when you just have a look over here you also have if you look at all these different structures you have something called as your lysosomes here in plant cell it's smaller in animal cell it's a little bit bigger so the size difference between lysosomes in plant cell it is smaller in animal cell it's larger what are lysosomes by the way lysosomes are those um what you say um structures which contain a lot of enzymes in it and what happens is whenever the cell is aging or dying or there's some unwanted particle that enters into the cell the lysosome releases these enzymes and destroys it so this is also the reason why lysosomes are also called as suicide idol bags why because they have these they have uh, what you say these enzymes in it whenever the cell needs to be destroyed also the lysosome is released out so what happens is the lysosome itself kills the cell if the cell has to be destroyed so uh, in, in again both plant and animal cell has it just the size is different apart from that if you look at the cell both plant and animal cell has certain common very important features as you can see there is something called as your mitochondria very important feature both your plant cell and your animal cell has mitochondria mitochondria becomes important because this is the organelle in where what happens is all this um, you know we we eat food right we eat food and goes through the digestive tract and after a point it gets digested in the small intestine area it gets assimilated assimilated means what whatever particle that is there it mixes slowly with the blood stream and that thing is taken to the cells which are there each cell which is in need of energy this particle it can be your carbohydrates whatever it is it reaches to the cell once it reaches to the cell it is in the mitochondria where that particle is converted into energy that we are able to use it is converted or that particle is converted into atp adenosine triphosphate which our body is able to use as energy so be it your blood or your animal mitochondria is super important when we study genetic engineering and biotech you will understand mitochondria is important even for different other reasons okay we'll come to it quickly but just have a look so mitochondria is an important thing there is another organelle which is again present in plants and animals it's called as your ribosomes ribosomes are those areas in the cell where protein synthesis happens just keep this in mind right now this is a super important organelle when it comes to your biotechnology so just keep that in mind so now we've understood the animal cell and the plant cell differences this is a previous upsc question which is being asked which of the following statements are correct regarding the general differences between plant and animal cells they've given few statements over here plant cells have cell low cell walls whilst animal cells do not plant cells do not have plasma membranes unlike animal cells which do a mature plant cell has one large vacuole whilst an animal cell has many small vacuoles and several options are given so we've clearly mentioned that plant cells have a cell low cell wall but animal cells do not that is a correct statement but nowhere did i tell you that plant cells do not have a plasma membrane unlike animal cells so just have a look at it look at the uh, here plant cell over here plant cell has a cell wall and then it has a plasma membrane also so this statement is wrong finally the third statement which says mature plant cell has one large vacuole whilst an animal cell has many that is also correct so what happens is c 1 and 3 are the correct options now to talk about another group of uh, terms that are quite important when it comes to discussing biotech is prokaryotic and eukaryotic 
karyot means nucleus now this is an organelle that's both there in plants and animals in any cell you have something called as a nucleus the nucleus is so important because all of the important genetic material get stored in the nucleus nucleus is literally like the brain of the cell okay whatever functions the cell has to do everything would be entrenched or it will the the instructions for it will be there in the nucleus this is an important thing because you would have heard prokaryotic and eukaryotic and a lot of people commonly think oh prokaryotic means it's single celled and eukaryotic means multi cell but that's wrong what is the actual difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic is see when it comes to prokaryotic you will have see for example in all the cases in uh, what you say um uh, if you if you take an animal cell you have the nucleus inside the nucleus you have all the genetic material whatever is there okay so actually what is present there is a nucleus the nucleus has a nuclear membrane and the membrane just encompasses everything together in a prokaryote that nuclear membrane is not there if i am saying the nuclear membrane is not there what is the meaning of it it means you are there is no specific area which you can clearly define and say oh yeah that is the nucleus why because the nuclear membrane around it is not there okay which means whatever is present in the nucleus be it the genetic material be it whatever it is it will be floating in the cell so in a prokaryote a defined nuclear region and the membrane bound cell organelles are absent there is no def defined area called as your nucleus when it comes to your prokaryotes in your eukaryotes what happens is you have a nuclear membrane and because it has a nuclear membrane all these particles are enclosed in it okay so this is the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes now we have to move into uh, one more definition sort of a thing there are primarily uh, what you say two types of cells you have if you take your body right now uh, almost all the growth cells of your body are together called as your somatic cells so growth cells means what anything anything that is there if you take your skin if you take your, uh, your you know from your face in any, any part of your body these are cells which are rapidly dividing and these are called as your growth cells apart from growth cells or somatic cells you have certain other cells in your body called as your germ cells the germ cells are the ones which are going to help in your reproductive activity so the germ cells differ in different sexes so for example if it is in a male you have the germ cells which are sperms and if it's in a female you have the germ cell which is an egg okay so it differs from a uh, you know sex to sex uh, somatic cells are common for everyone another important difference between somatic cells and germ cells is to do with something called as the number of chromosomes okay what exactly is the difference see if you take a normal human body right now and you look take a cell and you look at chromosomes in it okay where will you find the chromosomes you will find it inside the nucleus if you look at it you will see that every other somatic cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes which means how much 46 chromosomes okay 23 pairs this 23 pairs of chromosomes uh, which we would have inherited from our parents and everything is what determines who we are okay and it is there in every other somatic cell of ours now comes an important point here in your somatic cell you have the complete 23 pairs but in your germ cell you don't have 23 pairs you just have 23 chromosomes why 
because your germ cell i told you is used for your reproductive activity in a reproductive activity germ cells come from both the parents from the male and from the female so what happens over here is if we had 23 pairs in our germ cells from each side what would come 23 pairs 23 pairs we would end up with almost 46 pairs of chromosomes in the resultant human fetus so that is practically impossible uh, and uh, what would happen is that it would not be even categorized as a human fetus why because in a human as you know every every organism has a specific set of chromosomes which are there so 23 pairs to is for the human and you know there might be slight abnormalities but it will, if it's going to 46 pairs it would be such a huge abnormality which is that the organism will not survive as a human being got it so understand here in the case of germ cells you have 23 from each side 23 from the male 23 from the female fused together you have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the human fetus i hope this part is clear